All right, hey, in today's video, what I wanna do is show you uh, how I put together an SEO optimized blog post using the GPT-4 language model and chat GPT plus. So to use the GPT-4 language model and chat GPT, you have to have a, a plus account, which is about $20 a month. And what led me to put this uh, video together is I get a lot of questions about tool sets and what tool sets should I use? And so I wanted to think about what is a minimal tool set that somebody could use to create really good AI articles that are well optimized, so they're well SEO optimized. And to me, that would be a ChatGPT Plus account along with Neuron Writer. So if you're not familiar with Neuron Writer, it's an SEO optimization tool. Uh, it is available uh, to be purchased as a lifetime deal, which makes it uh, very economical. And it works great. I've been using it for well over a year. Uh, and I use it for all my blogs and a lot of other people do as well. So let's go ahead and just get started. So this is the chat GPT interface. I'm sure you're familiar with it. But in this case, you can see I'm going to be writing in a GPT-4 language model because I have the plus account. So to start anything off with ChatGPT, you do need a prompt. So let's go ahead and take a look at the prompts. So this is really going to be a series of three prompts that are going to write this final article for us. And prompt number one, I'm just going to go through it line by line. It's a little wordy, I understand, but I think it's important for you to see how it's put together. And it will be in the description of the video as well. So you can try it out for yourself. So it starts off with create an outline for a pillar blog post for the target keywords. So you want to enter your keywords where it's, where it's bolded there. And we'll sh I'll show you how that works in a second for a target audience of, and then enter your target audience description. And then I'm asking it to use only one H1 tag in the outline. That's in there because I was having problems with it using more H1 tags than just one, and you never want more than one H1 tag in your blog post. So then I ask it to try and use this list of terms in the H1 tag of the outline. These terms are going to come from Neuron Writer. I'll show you that in a second. So this where it says enter your H1 terms list here, that's where you drop in the information from Neuron Writer. And then try to use this list of terms in the H2 tags of the outline. Enter your H2 terms list here. Again, that's another list of H2 terms that comes from Neuron Writer. Include H3 subheading tags where appropriate. Include an introduction section. Include a key takeaway section include an FAQ section in the outline, inc include a conclusion in the outline, and then we're gonna ask it to write it all, all this in Markdown. So this is the initial prompt that we're going to use. I know some people are like, well, can't you just create one prompt that will do all of this, create the outline, write the blog post, use the keywords, and you can try if you want to. I've had very little success doing that. Uh, and the thing that you need to remember is ChatGPT is a conversational chatbot. So it's just not, hey, tell it something, and it does everything you want in one prompt. That you do, there's a little back and forth that has to occur. And so that's why this is broken down into three prompts. So let's go ahead and copy this prompt. And we're gonna go ahead and drop it into ChatGPT. So now there are pieces of this that we need to fill in and we can only do that by going to Neuron Writer and getting the data from there. So what I'm gonna write about is what is mountain biking now I typically, for these experimental blog posts, I either write about mountain biking or fly fishing. Those are two areas that I know really well. I think it's important that we use something as an example where I can tell you whether I think the content makes sense or doesn't, right? 
Um, I'm assuming you're all writing in a blog niche that you have some expertise in. So it's always important to fact check your blog posts. And in this case, I want to write about a, a topic I'm familiar uh, about because I want to be able to, to test out how good the article is. So to get started with Neuron Writer, you have to start a new query, a content query. And this is where we're going to enter in uh, the specific keywords that we're going to use to write about. So the topic that we're interested in writing about is what is mountain biking. So this is our, our set of keywords we're going to write to. Uh, I guess you could call it long a long tail keyword if you want to. Uh, it, it is a pretty difficult uh, topic to rank for. A lot of people have written about this. So let's go ahead and start the query. All right. The content, uh, the query is complete. So let's go ahead and click on it. And these checked articles, they're the top 10 in Google rankings for what is mountain biking. So the, these are the, the sites that we're going to end up competing against when we write our article. So the key thing is when I look through these, I just want to make sure that the search intent uh, is matching uh, our keywords. So most of these mountain biking explained, mountain biking the sport. I might add this one. Discover the variety of mountain biking. I think that would be a good one to also include. So, um, again, this is going to be a difficult article to rank for a new blog. Uh, but if we SEO optimize it correctly, uh, I think we, you know, stand a fighting chance of at least, if we're not in the top 10, hopefully getting in the top 20. So now that we've done that, uh, let's do this update competitor selection and continue. Now what that's going to do is it's going to go in, it's going to capture all the NLP keywords that are in these articles. It's going to capture information about the H1 tags in each article and the terms that are used in the H2 tags. And we need that information to add to our prompt. And this is what I mean. If you're not fami familiar with Neuron Writer, these are all the terms that you'd want to include in your blog post. You want to include as many as you can. Um, the basic terms hold uh, higher scoring, make a difference in your scoring more than the extended terms. So you definitely want to try and use use as many basic terms as you can in your article. And I'll show you how I do this in a second. Uh, and then the terms and the headings, you're trying to use these terms in the H1 section and the H2 sections in your heading and your outlines in the outline that we're going to create. So uh, to be able to easily get to these, uh, I, I always use this copy all visible terms to clipboard. So I'm going to ask it to grab a list of the terms. I'm going to drop it into a Google document. And what's nice, uh, at least with Neuron Writer, is they clearly identify your H1 terms, your H2 terms, and then all the basic and extended text terms that you'd want to have in the article. So this is going to help us as we um, add this data to the prompt uh, and get this going for us. So the very first thing we want to do is grab our H1 terms, copy those, go back to ChatGPT, and right here, enter your H, H1 terms list here. So I'm going to drop that in. Now I'm going to grab my H2 terms. Go back to the prompt.
And I've jumped ahead a little bit because what we want to do in the very first line of this prompt, we're creating a pillar blog post for the target keywords, what is mountain biking? So we want to make sure and add that here. I almost skipped ahead on us. I'm not trying to get you confused, but we want to remember to do this. And then we want to enter a target audience. So I'm just going to say people interested in the sport of mountain biking. Okay. So now we have everything in the prompt that we need. So we're going to go ahead and launch it. So the prompt has launched. And I'm just going to say that at certain times in this video, I may pause the video and then restart it just in the interest of time. Um, in this case, I think we'll be okay. There we go. So there's, there's the first piece that we need ChatGPT to do for us. So let's go back over to the prompts, because now we're going to do the second prompt. So it's this, add these keywords into each section of the outline where they would be appropriate. Please write in Markdown. And then this is where you enter your list of keywords from the SE optimization tool. So in this case, we're going to grab them from Neuron Writer. If you have Surfer SEO, if you have Phrase, some other tool, this is where you'd put that data. So I'm going to go back over to my list. I'm just going to erase this extended text terms because we don't want that added in there. Now we grab all the suggested keywords for an article. Copy it. So we've copied that. Put that in. And then get the initial piece of the prompt in above those keyword terms. So we're going to grab this. Go to ChatGPT, copy that, and off we go. So when this gets built out, I'm going to put this in the, uh, there's a, a website called Free Markdown to HTML, and that's where I'm going to drop this in and then transfer this over to Neuron Writer. So let's see how close we are to being done. We're at the FAQ section, here's the conclusion. All right. So we're good. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna go to Markdown to HTML. So here we go. Here's the outline. We're going to grab this outline. We're going to go over to Neuron Writer and drop it in. And this will be the basis of our article. And then we're going to write this section by section, and I'll show you how that's going to work. So we're back to Neuron Writer. What is mountain biking? So we're going to drop this in. And notice just the outline itself by virtue of the way that I've written the prompt. We're already at a score of a 65. The high score is a 72. So we want to try to meet or exceed that. Now we don't even have a title in yet. And you want to copy your H1, like I just did here. Click on the title, drop the title in. And I know it needs a meta description, but in, 
in this particular scenario, I'm not going to worry about it right now. It doesn't really affect the SEO score. It's good to have, but for this example, it's not necessary. So here we are. We're at a score of an 81. And I still haven't even written any content yet. So the key thing is uh, we want to continue uh, by going section by section and writing the post. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to go back to ChatGPT and we're going to use the third part of this set of prompts. Please write and enhance this section. Write in an informational, human-like tone of voice. And I'll show you how this is going to work. We're going to copy it. We're going to go to ChatGPT. We're going to drop that in. We're going to go to Neuron Writer. And we're going to cop copy this to get started. Go back to ChatGPT. Drop that in. Here we go. So it's writing out this first section for us. This is a pretty long introduction, probably needs to, to be shortened, but this is what, what we're getting. We copy it. Now what we're going to do is start off with a fresh screen. We're going to paste this in. And so now we've got the first piece of the article. I'm going to just add a paragraph mark. We're going to go back and rewrite the next section and the next section until we have a, a completed article based on our outline. So just so you see the workflow again, here's how it works. Grab prompt number three, copy it, drop it into chat GPT, paste it there. Go back to Neuron Writer where we have the outline placed in here. Go to the next section, copy it, go back to ChatGPT, and I just made a mistake here, so we're going to have to, there. Now it's going to go ahead and write the section. So it's done. Copy it. Go to the Markdown tool. Drop it in. And there you go. There's the next section. Just one more time. And then I'm going to go and write the whole article so you don't have to watch me do this. But I want to make sure that you get the flavor of the workflow and that doesn't get lost in the video and you don't have to go back multiple times to watch it. So again, we're back at the prompt. That's the third prompt. We copy it. We go over to ChatGPT, drop it in, go to Neuron Writer, go to the next section, what is mountain biking? We grab that. Back to ChatGPT, copy that in. Have it write the section. That's going in and writing this section for us. It's almost done. We're going to go ahead and copy that. Go to the Markdown tool. Drop it in. 
Now you can see the article continues to get written. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video, write the full article, and then show you what the Neuron Writer SEO optimization final score is. We'll take it over to originality.ai and check out the AI detection and plagiarism and readability scores and go from there. So I'll be back in just a couple minutes. All right, we're now at the point of writing the very last section of the document, of the blog post, excuse me. So we're going to let ChatGPT do its thing. Now, does this take longer than to write a blog post this way as opposed to a tool like, you know, like Koala Writer or SEOWriting.ai or any of the other uh, AI uh, content generation tools out there? Uh, this definitely is more time consuming. So that's one thing to bear in mind using this minimalist tool set. Um, but it is inexpensive. Um, for example, you know, an article in Koala Writer written in ChatGPT4, or excuse me, in the GPT4 language model, uh, a 3,500 word article is going to cost around $6 for that article. So you can definitely write it cheaper this way. It's just much slower. There's just more steps in the workflow. So you've got to decide whether you have more time to spend or more money to spend. And that's what's really going to um, determine what tools you use. Now, do you have to write everything in GPT-4? Of course not. I write a lot of articles in 3.5 Turbo. Uh, in fact, I use seowriting.ai quite a bit, and it writes in a combination of 3.5, 3.5, 16K, and uh, GPT-4. So um, this is one way to do it. It may not be the best way for everybody, but if you definitely want to write everything in GPT-4, it's the most economical way that I can think of, aside from actually having your own uh, open AI um, API for GPT-4. So we're going to copy this. We'll go to the Markdown tool, drop it in. And now that's the entire article. So we're going to copy this and bring it over into Neuron Writer. So now we're back to Neuron Writer and we're done with ChatGPT4 or excuse me with uh, ChatGPT. One thing you need to do is your title. Um, take the bolding away, make it an H1. Wait for the score to change, it's saving. So we're at a 68 and the competitor's best 72. Now there could be a few things here causing this. I noticed this key takeaways, um, that should be an H3. So it makes sense to go through and let's just double check and make sure all the headings are correct because that will make a difference. I'm going to pause the video and clean these up real quick. So we've got the final score. So I went in and I cleaned up the headings. And so we ended up with a score, an SEO optimization score in Neuron Writer of an 84 compared to the 72. So 72 uh, score was the highest of all selected competitors. And the average top 10 score was a 48 over the top 10. So uh, you can see uh, using these prompts um, definitely gave us a really uh, well optimized article. And you can see this by the fact as you go through the H1 terms, you see the H1 terms that were used, the H2 terms that were used. If you go to the terms and article, you can see most of the basic terms were used. Um, you could bump the score up a little bit by putting in cycling discipline and type of mountain. You could find a place to put that in your article if you wanted to. And then there are still uh, 
places where there were extended terms that weren't used. So could you spend some time trying to boost your SEO score even higher? You could, and I bet you could probably bump it up maybe another four or five points. Um, at this point, I don't know if over-optimizing the article is the key thing. I think the key thing is to actually read, proofread the article, uh, make sure you fact check it, uh, just read through it and make sure it reads well. And so th that's how I would spend my time. I don't think I would spend my time continuing to try to optimize this article any more than it is right now. Um, and we've got a nice article at 2,300 words. So let's go ahead and just pull this into originality.ai um, and get it scanned and see what kind of uh, AI detection score we get along with plagiarism and readability. And let's scan it. So just as I expected, it almost has a 100% AI detection score. It says the 2% is original. Um, you know, I've talked about Google and what they think about AI-generated articles. And I think the key thing is, are you bringing value to the reader? Um, again, I can't emphasize enough, you know, you've got some expertise in your particular blog niche or you probably wouldn't be writing about it. So to just take something directly uh, like I did and put it into to Neuron Writer and get a great op optimization score is one thing. I think it's important that you put your own spin on it, that you fact check it, that you add your own anecdotes and pieces of information based on your experience to make it uh, a better article for the reader. So let's check on plagiarism. 0% plagiarized, that's great. So nothing we need to be concerned about there. And then we'll check readability. Um, it's got a decent uh, reading ease score. So I, I think um, we're good there. So the last thing that I, I just wanted to briefly mention is, you know, part of my workflow for any AI written blog post is to use uh, Neuron Writer. Now, like I said, I've been using it for well over a year, or at least a year, uh, right after it came out originally on AppSumo as a lifetime deal. So I just wanted to uh, mention, I happen to be an AppSumo affiliate. So uh, there's obviously a link to Neuron Writer in the video description. If you were to uh, use that link and make a purchase, I would receive a commission. Now, the one thing I did want to mention right now on AppSumo is it's still $69 for a single code. Now, here's what's happening, and I think it's happening in maybe two or three days. So, yes, this offer is ending in four days. So it's not going off the lifetime deal, but the price is increasing. So he says, don't panic. The deal isn't ending for good, but we are increasing the price soon to allow us to continue sustainably offering the AppSumo deal, considering all the updates and features that have been released. If you do want AppSumo, if you do want to get this deal at AppSumo at the lowest price, you still can for another four days before the price goes up. So I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, if you uh, enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those as well. So until next time, take care.